Hello! Welcome to the Daily Wrap on Sunday, Hi. the very last Daily Wrap that we're going to be doing uh, because the show is very nearly over. But we've got Can some you highlights believe it? from the final day. Um, Say it so, Mike. I can't, yeah, I can't was, not do well, daily wraps. Well, I'm yeah. having so much fun. There I'm is wrap up everything that happens in the day, regardless. There is a bit more packs, guys. Yay! There's a bit more packs to enjoy, but EGX is packs. drawing yeah, to a close. It and it's uh, yeah, it's a privilege to be here to to wrap it all up. Thank you to uh, Virgin Media for powering the daily wrap over the course of the EGX and PAX show. Um, on what a week it's been. Yeah, it's been awesome. There's been some really cool stuff, and I think it's actually. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like it's gotten kind of stronger as it's gone along as well. There's been some really, really good stuff in the last few days. I mean, days. That, ox, that Ox Venture, though. No, yeah, that was that garbage. Was I thought it was rubbish. Was <laughs> no, it was good. It was good. Um, but yeah, no, I, there's been some really interesting talks and things, particularly, I think, um, a lot of stuff on Next Gen, which we'll talk a bit about again mm, uh, What great on. timing but, to have yeah. sessions about Next Gen news well, here yeah. at EGX Digital. I, I, I'm sure when it was planned, it wasn't planned to be like exactly when the PlayStation pre-orders were going to go live, but it's perfect timing because everyone's getting in a bit of a froth about uh, Next Gen, so it's good to have some, <laughs> some stuff in, about that. But, um, in how, a bit of a froth. <laughs> we're all frothy. I'm, yeah. I'm a bit frothy about Next Gen. Um, how have you guys enjoyed the show then, uh, as a whole? Yeah, it's been yeah, really good. Yeah, great mix of stuff. Um, it's been really nice getting to kind of cherry pick panels for the daily wrap on mm. the days we've done the daily wrap because mm. there's there's such a lot of lovely content going on. Yeah, yeah and I'm, I'm really interested in like the process of game development. And there's been so many really good panels on that, on different aspects of game development that I normally wouldn't know where to find that stuff. And it's brought all that together in one place, which has been really good for an extremely lazy person like me. Because then I don't have to go anywhere and search it out. It's all right. I think there. you're going to like the panel that I've got to talk about today mm. and okay. the one that I've chosen today, because it is about game development and it's about writing, which um, oh, exciting. All right, cool. you should find very interesting. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's been... Um, it's been very cool to, uh, I think, you know, as kind of game players, sometimes we, I mean, we spend a lot of time talking about video games and, and making our kind of list features and things like that about them. But um, yeah, you forget just sort of the, the kind of uh, the expertise and the technical knowledge that goes into making these things happen. And from such diverse sort of areas like writing, for example, but also the sort of technical aspect and kind of engine stuff. And and then, um, yeah, I, I mean, that stuff like, uh, we covered yesterday, the design from life thing, like mm -hmm. some of the weird like vectors through which people come into game design and, and come up with stuff is just really fascinating. So yeah, it's 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 nice to get back in touch with that stuff. And, um, and, and you know, there's been such variety as well. Some great sort of uh, community panels like cosplay and, you know, tabletop RPG and mental health and diversity and all these sort of really, really sort of great subjects that are well worth tackling. So I think we've mm -hmm. been a bit it's spoilt um but shall we uh shall we crack on and talk a bit about um the the panels that we've yeah. chosen well, today i just, just want to say before... hi to the chat first we oh do, yeah, yeah. because nick idea. de jager says andy and the phantom hat returns yes explain your phantom hat there please, andy for anyone okay. who's unfamiliar well i'm wearing the official pax egx digital snapback right. mm. which yes. is obviously a, a stylish item of head apparel but um in addition to this gray brim the underside is green actually almost exactly the same green as my green screen it's a perfect so, green screen but what's is confusing is the gray screen. is also almost exactly the same shade of gray as the background so not only is the bottom invisible and gray when it should yeah. be green but the top is gray in a similar way but not an egx logo oh that's worse that's, that's weirder yeah, isn't that's it that's horrible yeah please, <laughs> please stop. oh wow <laughs> yeah that's no that's it does just look like you're missing you, you know the end of kill bill 2 yes yeah what oh, if i no. made it tim curry and then i could put his eyes through how about We've that? I'll be back, regular that commenter look? on that the channel says. Horrible. Happy Sunday, <laughs> friendos. So, happy Sunday to you, Carly Happy Sunday back. to you too, yeah, absolutely. Happy Sunday. Eleanor Smith says, excuse my awful technical knowledge. No need, to, no need to, to be excused, Eleanor. Uh, but is, how can I watch the panels on demand? Well, uh, you can check them out on uh, EGX's YouTube channel, mm -hmm. which is, you know, as you'd expect, easily findable. Uh, but also, if you go to paxegx.com, then you'll be able to catch VOD versions um, as and when you like, in fact. Yep. So. Yeah, it's all great content and it will be sticking around um, after the fact. So yeah, yeah. Um, definitely after try and catch packs. stuff that you, that you maybe missed already. Um, Scott Jacobs is impressed that we started on time thing so it turns out Scott. all it takes to have a week of on-time starts is to get a billionaire involved Scott why are you going to do us like that <laughs> Richard, Branson, Richard Branston came to us personally yeah, yeah. he's um, just like off guys. camera behind yeah. Mike's monitor applauding just cracking the whip yeah <laughs> um no uh yeah we uh 
we we had a countdown, and when you've got a countdown, you've got to be on time. Those are the rules, basically. Maybe that's what we that's that's we, the lesson we should take we from the daily countdown. rap is that we yeah. should have like a five minute. If if we get someone to make a five minute animated outside Xbox, we'll countdown, always be on time. We'll always be on time because we'll we'll force ourselves to be on time because you know like we can't prove we can't make the countdown a liar. No, yeah, exactly. Like do the do the countdown like that. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, respect yeah. the countdown too much. We respect the countdown. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of space yeah. in the chat now because of Tim Curry and a lot good. of the one place not corrupted by capitalism from Emily Luffman. Very it good. It's been corrupted by capitalism. They're going to film a commercial in space. I read it on the news. Really? For S A Louder. Oh, well, there you it. go. Yeah. Who are they going to? Who are they going to shoot? Which models are they going to shoot up into space? I don't know. Whoever weighs shot, the same as an astronaut. They're on. Oh, that they've already calibrated the rocket for. It's just Elon Musk doing skincare. Yeah. Tell me now. Because he's worth uh-huh. it, or whatever. Speaking got of a, capitalism in space. You've got a sticker from Josh Pierini that's a Shiba Inu hugging a heart, which is oh. the most adorable thing I've seen all day. Oh, how do he, how do he get that? How do you get that human heart? Shouldn't have oh, a human heart, Shiba Inu. That's horrifying. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah. So it's been a it's been a good show. Um, mm. And uh, should we should we have a bit of a chat about our, our sort of highlights? And, and yes, yeah, well, yeah, Mike, as as you know, one of my interests is instigating fear <laughs> in people. <Is laughs> it... Luckily, there was a panel on exactly that topic. It was about instigating fear in horror games, and it was right. a um, a panel with uh, writer and host Louise Blaine and mm. panelists um, from various studios who've been working on horror games. Uh, including people from uh, Red Ego Games, Supermassive Games, uh, and Protocol Games, cool. to discuss the methods that developers use to create fear. So did you do this to yeah. make yourself immune to it in future? Is that why you were watching this panel? So that when well, you, you think next if play I understood game, the systems, yeah. it would be less scary somehow. Exactly. No, I'm just interested in um, in the techniques that they... It's particularly um, the guys from Red Ego Games. Um, we've got a clip of one of them talking in a second, but Red yeah. Ego have uh, made a game called Return, which okay. is a 2D side-scrolling puzzle adventure horror game with a kind of pixel art. Mm. Um, surely pixel art can't be scary. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's that's what they get into in the panel. They talk a lot about <laughs> like how you make something. I'm such a mark. <laughs> <laughs> how they make something well, wait, scary. Andy. <laughs> but wait, ah, I'm, glad, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, but no, the clip that uh, I have brought with me today is about. Um, how you make things scarier by making people care about your characters more. Okay. So, for example, if your main character was a total jerk who went around being a jerk, if they then got, got get got by ghosts, you're like, good. They deserve it. It's not scary. I'm glad, I'm glad that it's happening. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah, Mike, if you'd like to roll the clip. Absolutely. Please. What I tried to do, and what's very important to me, is I think horror only works if you care about who's at, what's at stake and 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 who's uh, who's. Uh, bound to lose. So for me, it was to develop the characters, particularly the lead character, Saki, in such a way that you cared what happened and to develop the story so that it wasn't just a series of jump scares and mood and great sound effects. It was, no, you really cared about this character that you were, you were, you were complaining, you were controlling. Anybody can throw, you know, a cat at someone and go, ooh, right? For me, the goal would be to throw a cat at someone, then have it scratch the person, then have the next five minutes be somebody scrambling for the EpiPen because they're allergic to cats. So do you agree with that noted fear robot, Mike, that it's scarier? I mean, to... I'm, I am allergic to cats, so yeah. I suppose that is slightly more scary than just, uh, you know, maybe having a dog thrown at you or something. But Do you um, think it would be scarier to have to look around for an EpiPen for five minutes well, after being scared by a cat? Maybe, yeah, maybe. I'll take their word for it. I, I still, I, I mean, if it was a pixelated cat, not at all, probably. I think I'd be not frightened <laughs> at all. Um, I noticed um, there was a mouse cursor on the screen during that talk. It wasn't mine. Um, but the guy was, was studiously someone else's. ignoring, yeah, studiously ignoring it. Yeah, that's what brought the cat out. Yeah, um, yeah. no, that's cool. I I now want to play that. Um, what is it? Re- Ret- return. Return. Yeah. It's um, cool. I I now want to play it just to test myself to see if it can spook me or not. Yeah. Um, we know Mike can be spooked. We all saw you play Alien Isolation. Mike's I get very tense, but I don't that's tend the thing. to jump. He's only scared of aliens that's from the true. movie oh, Aliens. That's the only right. thing he's scared of is xenomorphs. <laughs> but he poured all of his fear yeah. into yeah. that I'm one I'm a wreck. I'm an emotional yeah. wreck at that point. <laughs> yeah. You're it's a good job they're never going to make another Alien Isolation game because no one bought it, unfortunately. You have oh. to allocate your fear into different things. So it's like zombies, vampires, yeah. and you're putting different Mike's percentages. Like yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like 100% xenomorphs. So, yeah. That's how it works. No, that's really cool. And I, I really like uh, Lou Blaine is is amazing, and she does a lot of 
writing about horror and is a is mm. a real I trust her um on horror movies in particular more than anything else so give her a follow mm. if you can um on Twitter Louise Blaine uh, she's great so yeah that's uh, that's cool we, there's been some really good horror uh panels over the mm. course of the of the show so um yeah some nice really horrifying to... panels <laughs> well yeah. horrifying and horror themed yeah but um yeah how about how about you Jane what have you been uh, what have you been watching today well, like I alluded to earlier, this was another panel about game development. It was about uh, writing, well, it was about narrative and games, and the topic was called uh, The End is Nigh, and I Need It on My Desk First Thing Tuesday, <laughs> How to Write an Ending, to give it its full and proper title. Right. Uh, it was really, really interesting. It was led by Alice Bell of Rock, Paper, Shotgun, um, and uh, joined by Chris Gardner from Fail Better Games, which is the studio behind Sun of the Sea, Sun of the Skies, mm -hmm. like extremely like narrative focused games. They know what they're doing. Um, and it was about how endings are difficult. We all know endings are difficult um, and endings are often uh, disappointing or not quite yeah. what you want or, or don't quite satisfy. Game of Thrones, sorry. Oh, <laughs> Ouch. Not here to name names, but um, what I thought was really interesting is that you have, a, um, you have an instinct for why endings are mm. difficult i do know? yes you're right yeah but um have you th there are so many reasons why they are more difficult in games like why the ending is so important and so difficult in video games and also how few people even get to the ending in mm. video games so it's a really like special set of circumstances mm. that makes writing or, or creating should we say um the ending of a video game like a, a you know a special challenge when it comes to games which i thought was was really interesting i don't know if it's something that's addressed in the talk um but uh i find one of the things with endings in video games is that everyone feels obliged to put a big boss fight at the end of their game and and like that doesn't always fit that well so if you look at like the original bioshock you know you've got quite a obviously it's a first person shooter and it's got a kind of combat combat type stuff uh that you're doing throughout but um it just felt really i don't know uncomfortable when you then had to face off against a giant boss fight at the end and i think even even bioshock infinite struggled a bit with that it was a bit more of a puzzle in mm. infinite but still it felt like a kind of i don't know like they don't know how to really wrap it up but um mm -hmm. but yeah um, well, it's especially it's especially um, something that crops up when a game has um, tendencies to be like cinematic. Yes. Um, if you are trying to like ape certain tropes of a film, mm. then you need a big climactic action sequence for the end, even if that's kind of a little bit out of whack with the rest of your game. So yeah. that's what that, uh, yet another reason why endings are so difficult. <laughs> but they do get into how to do a good ending. So if you're into writing or interested in like the craft of, of like narrative in games, then it's well worth a watch. Cool. Let's explain why the at the end of Tenet, they have that big boss fight against Niels Bohr. And they're in the big Spoilers. circular circular boss room. Dreadfully sorry for anyone who hasn't seen it yeah. yet. Um, yes, I've no, I've not seen it, so I've no idea if you're joking or not. Let's hope that you are joking. <laughs> oh, man. Imagine uh, if not, Andy wasn't I'm not joking. Seen Tenet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, uh, I wouldn't okay, put well. it, I wouldn't put it past them. So, um, but yeah, um, yeah. So, do you, you have a clip. What's what's the clip all about, uh, Jane? Well. Um, the clip is about um, one of the many specific challenges of creating mm -hmm. an ending in a game in that it's not just on you, the writer, or you, the narrative designer, but if, well, you know what, I'm going to let, I'm going to let Chris Gardner let, let tell it. Talk it. Fair enough. Itself. Yeah, here we go. Thinking about it now, the, the more I talk to you, it's so, it's so clear how writing endings for a game is different to writing endings for anything else because you've, you've got the player You've got the potential for multiple different endings. You've got the image for the constraints on on the resources yeah. that you can't just, you know, yeah. So okay. and then they go to space. Although yes. I suppose yeah. That kind of is. Yeah, absolutely. And and that has that, those constraints that they're there everywhere. And gaming is is much more collaborative than novel writing, for example. I imagine mm -hmm. that like making TV and making film that seems phenomenally collaborative. Yeah. To me, uh, but. Gaming as well, and I think maybe gaming because everything you're doing affects everyone else right now, not just down the line. Um, and there's so many things that you have to be aware of. Like if in the final cutscene you write the two words, they hug, uh, that's another thing you better mention to your animation department because <laughs> making two characters hug in games is phenomenally difficult. <laughs> it's like ludicrously hard. It's much harder than having a planet explode. So there, 
There you go. One important lesson about the collaborative nature of crafting games, of course, and another important lesson in that it's easier to animate a planet exploding <laughs> than to animate a hug. Yeah. So mm. that's probably why we see so few hugs and so many planet explosions. I like the idea that uh, the ending is often the last bit they do. Like they make the entire mm. thing in sequence. They're in like, sequence, right, yeah. we're making a game level one. Um, but I suppose it sort of makes sense because if you look at like the statistics, very few people actually complete games. So... In they do way, talk about that. It yeah, doesn't they do matter talk about if your that. ending's bad. <laughs> well, they talk about that, and that that is not entirely true because the people who are going to evangelize hardest for your game, the people mm. who are going to recommend your game to their friends or or whoever, um, are the people who are going to complete it. So you kind of want to serve them the most because they're the ones who are the loyalist fans and the ones you know if you if you deliver a really bad ending they're going to be the ones telling the rest of the world about it yeah the thing, oh, the thing i'm taking from that is that the player is a beautiful enigma someone finally finally <laughs> noticed yeah i'm out that, here being a beautiful, a beautiful enigma, enigma. <laughs> Yeah, I'm out here being a beautiful enigma, wondering if anyone will notice. And then and finally, only, only Chris, Chris Gardner Grayling. is noticing. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not Chris Grayling. He's the politician. <laughs> Sorry, Chris Gardner. <laughs> um, yes. No, that's cool. I, 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 you know, and if you make a really bad ending, everyone watches it on YouTube and, and it becomes a meme because no one actually... They, they mention YouTube as well, actually. They, they mention that mm. as, as another vector that your ending will be seen. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's really interesting. Thoroughly recommend. Go and check it out. Cool. Well, I watched a... Um, I mentioned this in... Is it about cars? Yes, it is a bit <laughs> about cars. Um, but it's more about uh, next-gen stuff. Um, so they I mentioned... did a thing that wasn't about World of Warcraft. <laughs> he managed it. Yeah, yeah it well, me. I just have it no restraint, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but yeah, no, uh, so I mentioned this yesterday, uh, talk about next-gen and how there was going to be a talk about... Um, by the guys making uh, Dirt 5, uh, which is a next-gen launch title. Um, and about the technical challenges uh, and and what next gen consoles afford you as a as a developer, and it didn't disappoint. It was uh, hosted by Rich Ledbetter again. We we sort of extolled yes. his virtues. He knows so much. He has a galaxy sized yep. brain. He can yeah. jump really high. Well. <laughs> he can yeah, or as high as a man is tall. We stand a king. Um, yeah, and that but... king is Rich Ledbetter. <laughs> he can do a spin kick that will knock your block off. I don't. <laughs> He's I don't know. Super <laughs> strong and fast. And great but anyway what i found interesting about this talk was uh, one of the big things in next gen that everyone's talking about is 120 frames per second right um and there is a question so many frames. which is like Too is that frames. is that great is that a really cool thing like is that an exciting thing are people going to notice uh so that's what my clip is about and i thought it was a really interesting um part of this very interesting talk so there are two two tracks for it there's how do I feel about this as a developer and how do I feel about this as a player? So as a developer, I want to look at 120 hertz and think, what do I need to do in the engine to push it to be able to reach 120 hertz? All of the optimizations and speed benefits that I'm going to get in trying to squeeze things into that, some of those are going to, going to come over to the 60 hertz option and that's going to bleed down into other, other modes. So it's going to, general optimizations are always going to help. But from a player, that causes me to go, actually, well, 120 hertz, how does it feel? I'm curious, I want to have a go. What does that do to a racing game? Is it quantifiably different? 120 versus 60? 60 versus 30 is obviously a gargantuan difference in feel. Is, am I going to get that again? Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what you think about that. Um, and actually, I wanted to talk to you about this because you did a video uh, about input latency mm. and 120 hertz and what does that do? I watched the video, you were asking about um, how does input latency come into it with 120 hertz. So new hardware like Xbox Series S and Series X um, support low latency input for controllers. Um, that requires you to think differently about how your frame is structured. You want to make sure that the GPU um, is triggered way earlier in the frame, as soon as possible. So making sure that in Dirt 5, as soon as absolutely possible in the frame, we capture input, do the physics update and kick off the GPU and then do any other work that we possibly can. Making sure that the game feels different in 120 FPS is, is important. So I'm looking forward to seeing what players think. It, does it feel different? Do they appreciate that? It's interesting because not everybody does, I think. So there you go. Um, I thought what was quite cool about that is it was, it's a very honest chat. Like obviously this this guy is promoting Dirt 5, which is a next-gen 
console, but I thought it was kind of refreshingly honest that he was like, some people probably aren't going to be able to tell the difference between 60 frames per second. I can only see one frame a second. <laughs> that's the max. I'll be able that's to feel the, the difference. I can do. Um, yeah, you're right, Jane, and and that's the that's the key thing is that in terms of responsiveness and just how responsive the game feels, uh, that is a big thing that is going to change. But um, unless yeah. they don't have a monitor or TV that supports, well, this is it. I, you know, if you um, yeah, if you don't have a, a sort of free sync television or whatever, you know, you might be limited to 60 frames per second. But the the new consoles, particularly the Xbox, they're working really hard on sort of input lag and things like that. So that seems to be a key sort of battleground for next mm. gen, and obviously for racing games that stuff's really important because if the car slides a bit you need to be able to catch it immediately and all that kind of stuff so um yeah i thought that was a, a really interesting talk well worth checking out if you if you're interested and fascinated by the next gen you're getting super hyped and you've pre-ordered your next gen console it's it's well worth a watch definitely um cool before we before we uh move on also jane you've been playing a a game called unpacking is that right to goodness video game yeah what oh. i played yeah let me tell you about it there is a new demo for unpacking Mm. Uh, the PAX Online demo. Um, we're looking at it right now, gameplay from it right now. And it is a, a really lovely yeah. Zen puzzle game. I, I don't think you can hear the music right now, but no. it has some really wonderful music. And it's this kind of isometric, beautiful, oh pixel arty game in which you do like item Tetris, like object Tetris, right. unpacking someone's possessions into a series of rooms. And the series of rooms or series of, of homes kind of tells a story about their life. So it's it's narrative as well. Okay. And it's really adorable. And also you just get to root through someone's possessions and who doesn't <laughs> right. want to do that? You know, there's a demo, a free demo available now on Steam and I thoroughly recommend yeah. you go and have it's, on, oh it's very God. relaxing. Yeah. It's it's very satisfying to just place everything neatly in the right places. And and like you can't really Really, I mean, you, you can get it wrong, but it's not it's not punishing. It's much more of a kind of like zen experience mm. that, that is very relaxing, and I recommend that. And I felt so seen because this is like a student kind of bedroom. And <laughs> yeah. at one point, I unpacked like a Donnie Darko DVD. <laughs> oh, like, no. It's me. It's me because um, the levels are that you have a year attached to each level. I think this is like two thousand and five uh, okay. or six nice. or something like that. And um, I love that it tells a story. There is the Donnie Darko DVD. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Um, um, there's an entry in the meaning of Lyft uh, for Kentucky, which is fitting exactly and satisfyingly. It's yeah. like the cardboard box that slides neatly into an exact space in the garage or the last book, which exactly fills a bookshelf, is said to fit real yeah. nice in Kentucky. No. And I feel like you'll get that feeling a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. you sure do. You sure do. And also the, the narrative is really sweet because you can see the stuffed toys on the bed there. Mm. And there's like in an earlier level in the demo, um, you are unpacking like a kid's toys. Mm. And so it's apparent that you're unpacking the toys, the precious toys that they've kept into their sort of student years. Uh, okay. So it sort of subtly tells a story at the same time. It's really sweet. So that's um, unpacking by which beam. Yeah, which it's beam on games. the um, in PAX Indie Showcase is where you yep, can find yep, that. Yep, yep. And uh, it's a brand new demo. demo. Mm -hmm. Thoroughly recommend you go check it out. Uh, it is out in 2021. So you'll be waiting a while, but you I, know, why not? I will have to try it because now. although you say it's Zen, like like, that looks like moving day and moving day is the most stressful and unpleasant day <laughs> well, I've ever experienced so it's the antithesis of a real moving day which is very stressful mm, and, yeah. and annoying it's actually very satisfying and zen so. <laughs> well you know what time it is now what time is it Andy Oops. it's time tell me what for the bag of swag oh the bag of swag <laughs> all right let's go bag of swag time There we well, are. I wanted to yeah. say it was too late to compose a sea shanty <laughs> jingle for the Bag of Swag segment oh, because no. it's the final ever well, Bag of Swag segment. If yeah. we return for EGX 2021, um, then well, that's more than enough time for Andy to write a, yeah, a and whole, to hire a pirate yeah. band with an accordion exactly. to play the yeah the, dread, <laughs> the dreaded tale of the Bag of Swag. Anyway. You folks like winning things. Certainly right? do. Well, Certainly do. You, you could be like yesterday's Bag of Swag winner, Lauren McFadden from Woking. Nice. Who has won well a Bag of Swag with the correct answer? It was Nolan North who it played was Tony. Nolan. It was Nolan, Nolan, Tony Nolan Stark North oh. in the Marvel Avengers game. If you just guessed, if you just said Nolan North, you know, because the odds <laughs> yeah, were even that it might be Nolan North, then you got the answer right. Yeah. Uh, and maybe you were Lauren McFadden. Yeah, so Lauren, someone will be in touch on Monday to yes. sort out your prizes. It probably won't be Nolan North. But Sorry, you never know. or yeah. Tony Stark in yeah. general. Um, but yeah, that's cool. Uh, we've got another bag of swag to give away. Mm, um, what's in it? 
Well, today win? Uh, we have the OX exclusive shirt, which Andy, I believe you are modelling oh, yeah. right Modeled now. Modelled by Andy hey. Farron. There See, you go. Wearing this, there it is. They they're are extremely limited. Now edition extremely limited because edition. I don't think they're being sold. I think they sold out. So this <laughs> yeah. prize, they one. sold out. This, yeah, this is pretty much your last opportunity to get this shirt because they have sold out. Yeah, uh, and you can't get them anywhere else now. Uh, so. In addition to that, you also receive a free year of M500 Virgin Media Broadband, which is obviously Boss gamer level focused. Broadband. Uh, boss level broad, broadband uh, and a £100 Amazon gift card as well uh, that you can spend on games or whatever you like. Um, yep, there's an EGX digital logo in Apple Pin, a digital mug, and this reality phasing cap. Yeah, you could also does win does not one of phase these. actual reality. You're definitely going to need good broadband when these new consoles come in. Especially Absolutely, if you've got the non disc ones because you'll be downloading all your games. The day the day massive. one update, yeah, it's probably you want to get that quickly. Yeah, so you um, get your boss level broadband in now. And don't forget that uh, even if you don't win, uh, you can head over to the Virgin Media booth uh, on the show floor, and there's an exclusive offer there which is only available to. Uh, Packed EGX uh, attendees, uh, I suppose you'd call them, um, and it's uh, yeah, it's a really great deal. Not available yeah, anywhere else. Just click else, on the so. uh, offer banner on the Virgin Media stand to check out the details. That there. is there the same place where you can enter the competition right. for today's right. bag of swag. Well, well let's the question. Get the competition How do question win? up. There you go. Uh, the question for today's bag of swag, the very last one, is uh, in swag. Dev Griffin's big boss battle on the Virgin Media booth. Which game is Dev playing? So head over to the Virgin Media booth on the show floor. Um, at paxegx.com uh, slash competition you can enter and uh, and win that final bag of swag um, is it what remains of Edith Finch uh, I don't know if that has a boss in it I don't know I think oh, it's, yeah, a, it's a, a boss, boss battle isn't it, isn't it? it's a giant Andy, finch so. isn't it yeah. <laughs> called yeah. Edith <laughs> you've got to circle <laughs> straight and fire rockets at a giant finch yeah well yeah. maybe that's it maybe maybe you should enter Andy even though as we've established many times you you're not, not allowed to win to I'm not allowed to enter <laughs> Richard Branston isn't allowed to enter <laughs> There's Who's actually a specific enter? rule that says Andy Farrant is not eligible yeah, is to banned. enter. Yeah, is banned. Is banned from this competition. Specifically, Andy. Yeah. All right. Well, we've only got three minutes left of the daily wraps. So we uh -oh. should definitely give people oh, wow. a bit, Pax. bit, Pax is yeah, bit of a heads Pax up as to what's coming up. Pax this is coming up. I'll tell you what's exciting. What? Tea with Grandma Gamers. <laughs> old ladies talk nonsense. Please. Rude, maybe. Word rude about things. games. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a virtual tea party for old lady grandmas to yeah. talk about what they love and hate about games like and they're just going to roast Skyrim that I don't yeah I don't want to yeah. I mean there's a clash here as you can see obviously on PAX 3 there's new games old consoles which I'm sure is a very very interesting talk about how people build modern games for old consoles like the Mega Drive and things like that which people are still doing it's kind of a really interesting what? part of gaming yeah. but Incredible. it's not going to be as good as tea with tea grandma, with grandma gamers, gamers, old ladies talk beep about yeah. games. Sorry. I mean, I have it on good authority that they're going to roast Skyrim. <laughs> they're going <laughs> to absolutely, absolutely go so, to town. Yeah, look out, Todd Howard. That's just on before it. bedtime UK time, so um, definitely something to have with your So you can go to, go to bed with your ears full of profanity. <laughs> yeah, really. From the grandma elderly. profanity. Yeah. All right, yeah. uh, and if you want something super late UK time, but very reasonable uh, US time, uh, Saving History with Video Game History Foundation, uh, which I think is kind of an interesting thing. I've just pre-ordered a PlayStation Digital um, right. and obviously preserving video games into the future when we're reliant on servers and you know digital only things and it's not hard copy anymore is a really interesting mm. conundrum I guess and, mm. and, and emulation is part of that as well so that's gonna be a really it's like interesting how they lost about. tons and tons of early cinema history because it was all printed on celluloid that is extremely flammable yeah. and all burnt and wasn't like but backed up yeah for instance video games on mobile phones stopped being supported about a year later mm. and then those phones are all you know recycled Obsolete, or thrown yeah. away or whatever and so they're what happens to Angry Birds in 10 years' time? Yeah. How are you going to tell your kids about Angry Birds? Well, I was watching that um, Netflix documentary, High Score, about video games. Mm. And there's an episode about... Um, there's a developer who made a uh, LGBTQ um, role-playing game called Gay Blade. And mm. he, he basically lost the code for it. And it's essentially oh. lost forever because there's no kind of archiving of that stuff. Mm. And he's going around like going through car boot sales and like uh, flea yeah. markets trying to see if he can find the discs for this game Poor otherwise person, it's just yeah. lost to history um so yes yeah, wasn't there stuff a remaster like, this is... like a few years ago that was based on code because the, the the actual publisher didn't have the original code anymore they had to go out and get it from might have been silent hill actually they weren't archive, able to get hold of like some that. yeah, yeah some mm. bits of the code it's gonna be a real a real challenge certainly like... I, as a really high profile example a lot of people yeah. uh wonder why there was never like a higher resolution version of final fantasy 7 it's because they never backed up all the 3d models for those backgrounds the USB stick. so all they had was <laughs> the sort of yeah. low resolution playstation stuff anyway yeah, i thought yeah, that was I'm kind of interesting so that's important work so yeah worth checking out that panel as well guys it's it's 
almost time to wrap the final daily wrap of wrap the show. Uh, let me just have a look at the chat, see if there's any more comments before we uh, before we disappear for another year. Okay. Uh, yep. We disappear. We're not, I mean, we will we still be back around. In the bottle. We will exist. Yeah, yeah it's worth back pointing out that we will land. still be here. Um, <laughs> unless, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah Andy, you're going to be playing Morgan Monday tomorrow. Red Dead Redemption 2 with Andy tomorrow. Yeah, Red Dead Redemption right? 2 with me, Andy. It keeps going. Uh, the Gaming Just Meta says, rolling. thanks for recommending the series S Talk. Nice listening to people who, despite being knowledgeable in their field, try not to speak in absolute. Oh, that was good. Yeah, yeah. The um, Thursday talk with Ollie Welsh and Rich Ledbetter about mm. the Xbox Series S was really fascinating. Very, very um, cool. Very useful. I think so, the, te yeah, the tech stuff's been a real... Because I am very, very excited about next gen. I'm getting increasingly excited about it. Um, and we are on outside xbox obviously going to be all over that and on outside extra um but yeah it was really cool to to hear all the tech stuff and really get into the really indulge my sort of nerdy side yeah. and, and 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 get into that stuff so yeah i hope right. you've enjoyed it too yeah it's time to for us to pass the baton to mm. pax yeah so uh please enjoy all the great pax content make the most of it yeah last, tell the grandmas we said hi <laughs> yeah. to go easy on skyrim it's right good luck grandmas <laughs> no crush it crush yeah. it grandmas <laughs> give them hell all right cool um, yeah thanks for joining us all week uh thank you to virgin media yeah. as well uh, for supporting us all the way through this uh, it's very much appreciated we've really enjoyed doing the daily wrap and really enjoyed having you along enter the competition and win the last one of these shows yes cool. yes do it. all right take care then bye, bye.